of heroism. It is I, your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And none there are, to my eyes at least, more legendary than he himself, Superman the Man of Steel. And it is with his legend that we begin the extended road of distinguished champions. Released in 2013, Man of Steel aimed to do for Superman what the Nolanverse did for Batman. A survivor of planetary catastrophe has the greatest of power. With this power, however, comes the greatest of responsibility. And so the last of the House of El must prove his heart and battle those of his race that wish humanity harm. It has been explained to me that others have yet presented their opinions upon this legend. In their wake, we now present ours. This being so, join us, won't you, as we begin the extended road of distinguished champions by uncovering the legend of the Man of Steel. On the distant world of Krypton, a child is born. Born to the House of El, this boy child is the first natural birth in centuries since the regimentation of Kryptonian society. For you see, dear viewer, Jor-El has seen the ending of his world and fears that it is coming soon. With this in mind, he has conceived of a final heir, that this heir may forge his own destiny. And while General Druzod feels as Jorel does, Druzod prefers direct methods. And after a slight detour, Jorel prepares his infant son, Kalel, for an incredible journey. And the forces of Druzod are too late to intervene and they shall pay a heavy price for their insurrection. And in the days that follow, the prophesied doom comes to pass. Mourn not, dear viewer, for Krypton lives on in its survivors. So it is then that Kal-El is delivered to Earth. And in the little town of Smallville in Kansas, Jonathan and Martha Kent Take the infant Kal-El, or Clark, as he is named, and raise him as their own. The youthful Clark Kent must grapple with his heritage, yet he cannot hide the good person that he is. And in time, he learns of his true lineage. Yet not all souls are destined to be saved. Dear viewers one and all, come bow your heads in remembrance of Jonathan Kent. And in time, upon a fishing boat, we find a man, and a dire situation aboard an oil rig. Clark Kent rescues the remaining men aboard this oil rig and affords them a window of survival. Yet the seas cannot claim him, and when he returns to land, he overhears tell of a strange object buried in the Northern Arctic. Where we meet stalwart journalist Lois Lane. Clark Kent discovers that the rumours are true. And he is not alone. Yet the thirst for knowledge is not without danger. Fortunate indeed is Miss Lane then that she was not alone. 
For you see, dear viewer, in the times before the fall of their society, Kryptonians looked to the stars. This ship that we explore, then, is but one of an entire fleet that explored strange new worlds, sought out new life and new civilizations, as boldly they went where none had gone before. So it is, then, that an ancient Kryptonian starship rises once more, and father and son meet at last, and Clark Kent discovers his origin and his mission. And while Miss Lane would seek to tell her tale, conventional wisdom, and rightly so in a rare occurrence, would tell her that the world is unready to receive the news of an extraterrestrial better. This point, however, is soon forced. Witness then as Superman goes willingly to his fate. Which may well be the end of him. Ah, but I jest. Superman shall endure. Know then that it was the ending of Krypton that destroyed the machinery that imprisoned Zod and his fellows. And it was the distress beacon of the polar ship that led them to Earth. For now, however, Superman enters a state of delirium. Zod reveals the destiny of Krypton and his plans for Earth. Fortunate indeed we are then, that Miss Lane was also taken. And from Superman she received a command key, one that installs a shade of jor in the systems of this ship, and it is this shade of jor that allows her to escape. Yet she still has need of Superman, <laughs> as does the little town in Kansas, that will stage the first battle between Kryptonians. Yeah! And to cut a long story short, Superman is victorious with the aid of the American military. Zod and his forces regroup, sending a terrible terraforming engine to prepare the Earth. But Superman has an engine to end this malevolent machine while he deals with its twin. General Zod, however, will not be denied. And so it is, dear viewers one and all, that Kal-El and Drew Zod engage in battle. For it is the cruel truth that this battle is to the death. And in conclusion, I give you mild-mannered journalist, Clark Kent. Such is the legend of the Man of Steel, and I deem this legend worthy of remembrance. I won't lie to you, this movie's kind of a mess. It starts off as a high-budget sci-fi romp, then it features clips of a coming-of-age drama about a budding, super-powerful being who doesn't really fit in. Then it meshes the two when Superman finds the lost scout ship in polar ice. Eventually, though, it becomes a Superman movie, except for that ending. Whether because of, or despite the direction of Zack Snyder and the script of David Goyer, the leads are believable. Adams as Lois Lane, who takes a lot of the events of this movie in her stride, and Cavill's Superman, he isn't fully formed here, Clark Kent, still dealing with being a Kryptonian who grew up on Earth, Kal-El, coming to terms with the fact that the only remaining members of his race are sworn to destroy the planet that he lives on, and finally Superman, finding an easygoing charm, because he's the most powerful man on Earth. And the A-list supporting cast? Lawrence Fishburne's Perry White, Diane Lane's Mark Kent, Harry Lennox's General Swanick, all fleshed out and believable. Which brings us to the flow, which as I said, is a mess. The genre switch isn't too jarring, but the flashbacks of the first hour or so, while narratively important, do take you out of the main story. 
but once it gets going, it is a lot smoother. Though I don't think that it suffers too much for being three films. What it does suffer is Snyder's direction, which seems to revel in collateral damage, massive destruction, the point rammed home that these are literal gods from space and they will make this world their new home if our new god doesn't stop them. And then, there's that ending. Yes, it's completely out of character, for a fully formed and charming Superman, and if he'd had the rest of the Justice League around him, Zod would still be alive, or have ended up in the Phantom Zone himself. But this is a completely new Superman, who is nowhere near the easygoing, fully formed, big blue Boy Scout we all know and secretly love. And yes, there were probably a lot of other ways that Zod could have been defeated, but this is what they did, and even though it's a dagger in my heart every time I see it, it doesn't change the fact that the rest of this movie, all 143 minutes credits included, is, for all its messiness, for all its flashbacks, still a pretty damn good movie, at least in my opinion. So in summary, if you're looking for the big blue Boy Scout, you won't find him here. But what you will find is an entertaining, action-packed sci-fi romp, featuring the debut of a Man of Steel, and that's more than enough for me. And with these words I direct you to that greatest of sights, the subscription button and its scintillating sidekick, the notification bell icon. And that you would be my hero. Consult the sacred texts below to find the path to my financial salvation. Or in your language, crowdfunding. Then we can escape it no longer. For in seven short days, we must at last address the dawn of justice. Until that time, I remain your humble host, fellow monkey, chronicler of legend. And I bid you, dear viewer, good day.